It's Friday, yeah. Um, are you ready for another huge episode of Let's Play the next <laughs> week drum roll, uh, the next Mrs. Trump. Uh, today's contestant is the lady who is, while well, she's managed to push her head so far up her own backside, it is totally FOS. Drum roll for uh, the US racist, transphobic, full of every single bit of caca you find in a baby's uh, diaper or clean to the bottom of your toilet, one Lara Luna. Chris Hayes. So look who he is keeping around him now. For instance, far-right media personality Laura Loomer, a self-identified proud Islamophobe who says she's pro-white nationalism. She's called Kamala Harris a drug-using prostitute, and who has been called appalling and extremely racist by Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, of all people. Now, yesterday, we told you how Loomer, who's called for the execution of Trump's political enemies and celebrated violence against migrants, got a ride from Trump on his private jet to this week's debate. How she then accompanied the former president to a 9-11 memorial observance in Manhattan, despite, or who knows, maybe because of, the fact she's a 9-11 truther. We told you how elected Republicans and campaign officials, a la Pat Cipollone, have grown concerned over Trump's increasingly um, close relationship with Loomer. They certainly seem very close. Many insiders saying she's encouraged Trump to push the conspiracy theories he's now spouting on the campaign trail. One thing is certain. Trump is kind of enamored with Loomer right now. It's great to have you, and you've been really very special. You work hard, and you are a, uh, you are a very opinionated lady. I have to tell you that, and in my opinion, I like that. Well, I but appreciate that. I appreciate that. all of your support, and you've been terrific, and everybody appreciates you, so yes. thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to sit with you today. Yeah. Pleasure. You're the best. I love you. It's kind of sweet in its own weird way. Now, all this came to a head today at Trump's latest press availability, where, after a few days of people asking, like, what the hell is going on here, he was asked point blank by reporters about his closeness to Loomer and her nutty extremism. What would you say to your Republican colleagues or your allies who are concerned about your close relationship with Laura Loomer? Well, I don't know uh, what they would say. I, Laura's been a, a supporter of mine, just like a lot of people are supporters, and she's been a supporter of mine. She speaks very uh, positively of the campaign. I'm not sure why you asked that question, but Laura is a supporter. Uh, I don't control Laura. Laura has to say what she wants. She's a, she's a free spirit. Well, I don't know. I mean, look, I can't tell Laura what to do. Laura's a supporter. I have a lot of supporters, uh, but I, so I don't know what uh, exactly you're Sorry, referring to. Mr. President. That's okay. Mr. President. President. Yeah, please. I just don't know. Laura's a supporter. I don't know. But she she is, she is she a strong her. person. She's got strong opinions, and I don't know what she said, but that's not up to me. She's a supporter. Let's see. She's a, she's a free spirit. Can't keep that bird in a cage. She's got to be herself. She's got to express herself and say things like 9-11 was an inside job. She's a strong person, and maybe 100 times she's a supporter, so what can I do? doesn't matter what the person does. They're a supporter. That may all be true, but it's not true that Trump is unfamiliar with Loomer's statements. And do you know how I know that? Well, because just yesterday, he was sharing links to Loomer's website on his own social media accounts. Meanwhile, today, Loomer is, today, today, posting more 9-11 conspiracy theories to her own social media. I'm not going to share them with you. What is crazy about this one individual who is so toxic, even Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks she is a little bit too far. Cuckoo! Uh, I don't think there's anybody, any, what should we say, therapist that would accept a session with this particular individual. They are just on a different planet. Do not have many friends and probably considered as a bit of an outcast. But obviously, in the world of champ, I know. Strange. Where's Melania? Today, Laura Loomer is a crazy conspiracy theorist who regularly utters disgusting garbage intended to divide Republicans. A DNC plant couldn't do a better job than she is doing to hurt President Trump's chances of winning re-election. Enough. I imagine that's widely shared, and yet, and yet, and yet. Yeah, and yet, and yet some more. I mean, because where was Tillis when Trump told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by? 
Where was Tillis when Donald Trump said there are five people on both sides? And yes, he did say it. And where, where were any of these folks as this cavalcade of crazy moved closer and closer around Trump? They were nowhere. Why? Because they didn't care. Why? Because they were making the moolah. They were getting right. the votes. They weren't turning on them. And so they were useful tools by the useful right. idiots who made as much as, as they could of it. The interesting thing about all of this that I find the most compellingly amusing, and I know you will, Mr. Hayes, is that Marjorie Taylor Greene seems to be a little bit out of sorts about all of this. <laughs> and I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. Cray Cray is upset about even more Cray yes. Cray. Well, the reality of it is that's all a part of this, this ongoing, you know, dance of, you know, who's going to be the housewife of Donald Trump kind of thing. Yeah. Who's going to be the closest to him? Who's going to have that influence? But note this, and you put your finger on a lot of it. Donald Trump has these people around him, not because he's seeking advice from them, not because they're offering any pretty any particular intellectual insight, but because they affirm his worst instincts. They affirm yeah. his bad judgment. They tell him what they want. You show that picture of Loomer sitting, standing up under Donald Trump. First question that crossed my mind was, where the hell is Melania? Because that's a little too yeah. close for a pick. <laughs> but it's it's that kind of is that kind of closeness that Donald Trump's like. So here we are on a Friday night, getting loomy. Well, let me go. Well, the, the the point about Marjorie Taylor Greene, Olivia, you've obviously covered the man for uh, uh, almost a decade at this point. And this, there's two parts of the mo here that are that are very consistent. One, the the point I made about January 6, where, you know, sometimes really mm -hmm. deranged people get very close to him, but he also likes it when the people around him fight each other and fight each other publicly yeah. and fight each other brutally because that is, that feeds the kind of ego addiction. Like they're doing this for me and it seems like he, you know, this all happening in front of him and in front of the nation is kind of what he enjoys. Yeah, I mean, he is a reality TV host. Let's never forget that. But let's also not forget that his political rise on the right began, uh, in, in this era anyway, with his promotion of the racist conspiracy that Barack Obama yeah. was not born in this country. He was one of the yes. central promoters of so-called birtherism. He claimed that he was sending uh, investigators to Hawaii. Uh, I happen to be talking about this recently with Sam Nunberg, who, who worked for him briefly on the 2016 campaign and had worked for him before then at the Trump Organization. And Nunberg said something like, yeah, we never sent investigators. It was all made up. He was playing into this sort of racist back clash uh, of the Tea Party uh, to Barack Obama's rise. Um, and so none of this is like aberrant behavior. To have Laura Loomer around, um, to have any of these types of people around him, uh, they're not there because they're bringing a new perspective. They're there, as Michael said, because they are affirming what was already his worldview. And the, the aberrant stuff is when he had more measured people around him, people right, with more right, actual traditional right. political experience. <laughs> So uh, all of this is just sort of a return yeah. to what it was like in, in 2013, 2014, 2015. Yes. Uh, we all saw your back and forth with Laura Loomer. Do you have concerns about her access to Donald Trump right now? I have concerns about her rhetoric and her hateful tone. Uh, to me, many of the comments that she makes and how she attacks Republicans like me, um, many other Republicans that are strong supporters of President Trump, I think they're a, a huge problem. And that doesn't represent MAGA as a whole. It doesn't represent who we are as Republicans. And, you know, I typically try to ignore her post, but someone had sent me that post about Kamala Harris and it bothered me so much. And you know my personality, everyone knows I'm outspoken, and I just felt like it was time to call it out. I think it's wrong. Uh, we're not a party of identity politics. We're a party for all Americans. Um, and I think that's so important. And I think that, that we need to be focused on our policies, the inflation, the economy, and the border, and not attacking people for their race, not attacking them because they may not have children and they love their pets. And I don't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, and neither do the people, my voters at home in my district, and most people I talk to across the country. And so, yeah, I called her out last night, um, and, and I think it was important to do. Uh, she still traveled with the former president. Do you, would you encourage Trump not to 
keep close contact with her? You know, Laura Loomer has has lost two Republican congressional campaigns, one in a general and one in a primary. And um, I, I, this is such an important election. I, I don't think that she uh, has the experience or, or the right mentality to advise a, a very important president. Why do you think the former president I guess you're, 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 you're like, do, you, do you think that she's getting bad advice or he's getting bad advice from her? Uh, I'm not involved in their conversations, so I can't weigh in on that. Uh, but I do know this, that her rhetoric and her tone is, is does not match the base, does not match MAGA, does not match most Republicans I know. And I, I'm completely denouncing it. I'm over it. And I would encourage anyone else that matches her statements to stop. Quick question. What is your definition of a buffoon? Is it a clown with a low IQ? Somebody who lies? Somebody, you know, the, the description, one hand, doesn't know what the other hand's doing? Somebody that doesn't know whether they're coming or going? We used to call them a bungalow. Or should we just say you are in the Trumpy Trump zone of the world, where you're living in, it's like out of Stranger Things, a parallel universe where most of us can see that night becomes day, day becomes day, do you know what I mean, etc. But in their world, Clocks have stopped. I don't know what century they're in, but they're definitely not. But it's definitely not 2024. It really isn't. There's real-world uh, consequences to that rhetoric. Uh, Springfield, Ohio's newspaper reports that uh, recent bomb threats came from someone who mentioned frustration with the city over Haitian immigration issues. Uh, this stuff can lead to real violence. We saw it uh, at the, the Walmart in El Paso and the Tree of Life synagogue. I mean, on a serious note, I mean, there are consequences to this stuff, Scott. And I. I just have to wonder, we were talking about the Biden-Trump uh, debate a little while ago, and there are all these calls for Biden to drop out of the race and step aside after that debate performance. When the former president is talking about people stealing geese and eating dogs and cats, I mean, shouldn't there be a conversation about whether Trump should step aside even at this late stage? No, come on. He's the Republican nominee. He went through a primary, and unlike the Democrats, we actually respect the Democratic process. We had people vote. They voted for Trump. He's but the Scott, I, I remember so you going on and on about Joe Biden. I remember you going on and on about President Biden after that debate. And I'm just wondering, do you think that Trump yeah. is all there? Is he of sound mind? Yeah. Talking Trump about is, people stealing me, geese. Donald and, Trump is, the same, uh, Donald Trump is yeah. the same candidate today that he was in 16 and 20. One time he won, one time he lost. I don't know whether he's going to win or lose this time, but I don't see. I mean, he is, he, he is the same, and he represents the same kind of politics that he always has. I don't know if it's going to be enough this time, but no, I think to compare him to the absolutely mentally vacant Joe Biden is kind of ridiculous, honestly. Paul, your thought? Oh, look, th this is the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. Democrats have a political party. Political parties exist to win. Biden didn't look like he could win, so the Democrats replaced him with someone who can. Mr. Trump, Scott's right, he's a fatally flawed candidate. A boy needs a checkup from the neck up. OK, he's cracking up. He's under a lot of pressure. I mean, a anybody would, I think, be under pressure. Thirty four felony convictions being sued left, right and center, found adjudicated liable for sexually abusing a woman on Fifth Avenue. So he's under enormous stress and he's cracking under that stress. Uh, that's what's happening here. And, and I, I think it's sad. It may be too late, Jim. We're only 53 days in the election, yeah. but early voting is starting in just six or seven days in a lot of states. And those ballots are starting to go out, North Carolina particularly. So it may be too late. They may just be stuck with this guy. Madam Vice President, how are you feeling about Pennsylvania? I am feeling very good about Pennsylvania because there are a lot of people in Pennsylvania who deserve to be seen and heard. That's why I'm here in Johnstown. And I will be continuing to travel around the state to make sure that I'm listening as much as we are talking. And ultimately, I feel very strongly that got to earn every vote yes. and that means spending time with folks in the communities where they live and um, and so that's why I'm here we're going to be spending a lot more time in Pennsylvania so thank, thank you, you. Thank